There's some other little mushroom growing right next to these hedgehogs. And it has gills. And I'm going to be honest with you, I've never seen this mushroom before in my life. It appears to have little uh, fine felt-like hairs, black hairs on the cap. And it has gills that are close, very close together. The mycelium, or the roots, uh, it just kind of looks like a little, little ball of roots. Nothing sticks out there to me. No big roots sticking out or anything. When I cut that stem, it doesn't really seem to stain much. Hey, squirrel season's open. Slice it in half in a cross section. And just kind of look at it and see if it stains any colors or anything. I don't really think this one is going to. It might get a little darker is all. But it's always nice to check. But let's take a look at this. It's nice to cut in a cross section because you can see the way the gills attach to the stem. And a lot of times that's an important feature for mushroom identification. Typically, if you look in the beginning of any uh, mushroom identification book uh, worth its uh, weight and salt, uh, it will give you descriptions of the different type of gill arrangements, whether they be close or far apart or distant, as they call it, um, or whether the gills are attached to the stem, whether they run down the stem, or whether they are separate for the, from the stem. Uh, you get a lot of good information from reading the beginning of those field guides and stuff because that's where it teaches you how to go about identifying these uh, plants and mushrooms typically but I have no idea what that is but I have some good features and I've taken some uh, nice uh, detailed macro shots of the cap and stem and such and gills and the habitat here looks like it's you know it's growing in oak and beech and maple but uh, I'm gonna go home and uh, reference these pictures and stuff and this video and uh, see if I can't maybe identify this I'm not too concerned with finding out what it is because I've never found it before and there's only two of them so uh, it's probably not a, a food source because it's not very abundant but uh it's kind of neat to find out what these things are i think uh i kind of enjoy that more about getting out in the woods about getting out in the woods and uh fields and just identifying and uh discovering all the different plants and animals and stuff and, I kind of I get a lot of enjoyment out of uh, just doing that, really. Plus, you learn, you know, if you're a person that likes to hunt and fish and stuff, it gives you a little more insight too into the way the woods works and stuff, and that can it can actually help you with your hunting, surprisingly enough. When you uh, look at the woods as a a source of food or shelter or whatever it may be um, you, you kind of look at it the same way the animals do and then that's where you get your insight because you start seeing the the woods and the fields uh, 
a little more in the way like an animal would, you know, so you can kind of relate to them better and get an idea of the travel routes and stuff and why they move from one spot to another or why they're out in the morning versus the middle of the day or whatever it may be. I mean, if you know there's a an abundant crop of <laughs> hickory nuts or something like that, or uh, and you know there's a little patch of woods with some hickories, that's a, you know that'd be a good spot to go uh, looking for some squirrels because that's likely where they're going to be, wherever the fruit and stuff is getting ripe and for the picking. I'm kind of just out for a hike today, you know. We had uh, a lot of rain. I mean, it rained and rained. It finally uh, rained again last night and or uh, this morning or whatever, and it finally quit and got sunny for a few, and then it got windy, and uh, now it's just uh, pretty comfortable. The wind is keeping the mosquitoes and stuff at bay, so... Nice day to get off the beaten path and head right into the woods and, you know, check things out. If you know any uh, mycological societies or uh, sometimes there's groups and stuff in the area that have forays and get-togethers, you can learn a lot by going on uh, hunts, or as they call them, forays for mushrooms. I kind of just call it a mushroom hunt. I don't really like calling it a foray, but that's, I guess, the proper terminology. Sounds a little too elvish to me or something. I don't know. You know, get the, the walking stick and the, basket and a special little tool for harvesting and cleaning your mushrooms. That's my special tool for doing all that stuff and more. I got a toothbrush at home for cleaning mushrooms if I need to and uh, some other plastic brush that's used for auto parts or something. Of course, it was never used for auto parts or anything. Those two work together well to get any bits of dirt or sand or whatever out of your mushrooms. Without having to uh, wash them off too much. I try to avoid washing my mushrooms, if at all possible. Although a lot of times you do have to wash them some, but the more you wash them, the more the flavor gets leached out, the more waterlogged they become. Even though there are experts who disagree with that. But I'm sure if you walked out in the woods and gathered your own mushrooms and took them home and washed half in water and uh, just brushed the other half off and cooked them all up, you would uh, realize pretty quickly that the uh, 
unwashed mushrooms have a whole lot more flavor. Oh man, what is this? Freaking tub's broke or I'd take it home. This is all just plastic. Ice. Looks like all ice. And some black plastic bags. Hmm. I don't know what that was all about. This guy over here with the shotgun, I mean. He must be hunting leaves. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That kind of sucks all that plastic. I can't drag that big old thing out of here. That'll be here for a hundred years or whatever. Jeez. I think I'm gonna grab up these plastic bags and get rid of that anyway. All right, <laughs> winter green.